Painting the ship double sides and repairing the paintwork of the captain's cabin. Paint, white, under nine pounds. Yellow, under pounds. A carpenter's account for the paintwork on HMS Victory 200 years ago. And this is the great ship he and his mates painted, seen by a staggering 26 million visitors ever since she was dry docked in Portsmouth Historic Dockyard nearly a century ago. But those who come to see Admiral Lord Nelson's flagship, victor of the Battle of Trafalgar, icon of the Royal Navy, will now find themselves seeing her in an entirely new light. As you can see behind me, this is the 1925 colour scheme that was introduced uh, when the ship came in for restoration in the early 1920s. Uh, we're currently washing down the ship's surface with a gentle soap and water solution to remove any salts and dirt that have accumulated. We'll then be filling any cracks in the caulking seam to ensure that uh, we keep water away from the uh, insides of the ship. Uh, and then we'll be repainting it with a single coat solution which should hopefully last a couple of years. And uh, as you can see behind me now, this is the new ship's colour and the whole ship will be painted in this much more muted colour scheme. Uh, one part that I particularly like is the, the new gun port colour which is very fiery and I can imagine uh, would put uh, the fear of God in the people that saw when those uh, gun ports were opened. So the colour has drifted over time into this mustardy orangey uh, colour that we've seen really since the mid 1990s we've been using the shade. So we've been fairly confident for some time now that Victory had been painted the wrong colour, we just weren't very sure what the correct colour was. So we've been undertaking some archaeological investigations, we've been looking at some manuscript sources to really try and nail down what would be an accurate colour and in the course of that work as well as identifying areas on the ship and how old they've been, we have managed to pin down the correct colour for the hull planking, the colour that Nelson would have known. Sourcing the exact colour Nelson would have known required expert help. The National Museum turned to a team far away from Portsmouth, far away indeed from the sea itself, to find Victory's true 1805 colour, working from minute paint samples taken from the ship and carefully dated. Right, having brought the samples back to the lab, all the bags of samples in their small bags, we then go to mount the samples in the polyester resin, half filling the cells. We then put the samples on top, top it with resin. That's allowed to dry. We then polish that back and we get a selection of samples obviously in the resin as this. So a row of samples or cross sections. And then place that underneath the microscope. And if we just bring it in 200 times magnification, we get a better look. Down at the base, the layer here, this orangey layer, we've identified in other parts of the vessel that date from 1802. And then the paint layer above that, intriguingly, has burn layers on the surface. You can clearly see them across there, which date from 1805. And it would be interesting to think that, that was the burning from the Battle of Trafalgar. And it's not just been a case of identifying one colour. A wide range was used on HMS Victory in her greatest days, the era of Nelson and Trafalgar. Those two had to be accurately identified, even as with the fiery red of the gun ports, working from original recipes. Um, as you can see here, the external colour is not a great deal different to the R nail. Um, the black, a little bit more muted ochre colour here, instead of the or more orangey colour. The gun port lids inside painted the orangey red colour here, and the masts are a paler cream. It would have been the job of the young apprentices to help the the painters make their paint, um, you start off by a linseed oil base, in this case it's just a raw linseed oil, and into that we grind the pigment. Now it's the, the metal component in the pigment, in this case it's red lead, that helps the linseed oil to polymerise or to dry. Um, you grind it into a paste in the oil, and then to that they would then add whiting, which is basic calcium carbonate. Now whiting has no colour properties when it's in the oil, so it basically it makes the paint go further, but it doesn't change the colour, it goes translucent. That makes a very thick paste 
which is then thinned down by adding um, a turpentine base, or it could be a white spirit base these days. They use natural turpentine. Um, the paint would be mixed to this paste and stored in leather bags, and then on site it would be diluted further so they could apply it to the painted surfaces. The size of the task would be enough to make even the most determined DIY enthusiast quail, especially as the work of painting Victory has been done by a very small team. It's a challenge. Nice, nice job. It's something we've not done before. I've done the heritage work and projects, but I've never done nothing this big. Learning curve, yeah, more than anything. Um, and obviously, as you can see, the amount of caulking that's had to take place on here, it's, it's just, that's thrown us a little bit. How much we've had to put into that? But other than that, no, it's nice, because it's nice once you see it all block up and you can see the actual finished product of it all, it looks a lot better. Do you ever think of the guys who did this before you over the years? Oh yeah, I would I wouldn't like to have that job. Paint that by hand, brush. Lean over the edge on a bit of rope, but no, no cherry pickers today, no excess. It was all ropes and hold on. Dave, I don't think I could have actually done it if I had to do it back in the olden days, not at all. No, <laughs> no I couldn't have handled Health that. And safety. <laughs> Victory's fresh paint brings her to life again in the colours Nelson's captains and crews would have seen at Trafalgar. But, as with all change, some have jibbed at her new, true look. This quizzical comment appeared in a national newspaper. Do these interfering experts not realise what harm they have done? How many models of HMS Victory have pride of place in homes around the world? All will have to be repainted, because if the colours are wrong, it's not a replica scaled model anymore, but a ruddy toy. We have, I mean, we've had people looking at this and saying, oh, it's, it's pink, what on earth have you painted Victory pink for? That's probably why the French lost, you know, they spent so much time laughing at Victory. Um, I don't see the pink myself, I, you know, it's a pale terracotta colour or whatever you want to call it. Um, people are a little bit resistant to change, but I think the thing, the really key point for us is that this is not what it might have looked like. This is not what it looked like if we'd have been doing it 200 years ago. This is what it looked like. This is what Nelson saw. And when you come to visit Victory, when we tell you this is how something was, we want you to trust us and we want you to know that it's right. And that's the real motivation. And that's the key decision for us in making this change. If that ship's carpenter from 1805 could join them now, the Victory team believed that he would approve her paintwork and see her in her true colours as Britain's greatest warship, a heroine of the Royal Navy and a still-serving survivor of the day that Britannia began to rule the waves for the benefit of all who pass on the seas upon their lawful occasions. <laughs>